Hi, Les from Retired and Living the Dream and today another car washing video so it's going to be quite a long one again 15-20 minutes depends on how quickly I get the car wash but I've got to say this is going to be a bit of a ramble on and um, the subject matter today is how much would you pay for safety to live in a safe country feel safe every day now I'm from the UK I've lived in Thailand now for almost 12 years and um, I've enjoyed every minute of it and I've always felt safe living here in Thailand but since you since running my YouTube channel I've been speaking to many many people and at the minute I'm helping a few people relocate over here to Thailand because they feel much safer moving halfway across the world to live in a country that they feel safe compared to their own country and as I said there's, there's a, a lady is moving over and I'm helping her and I'll leave a link below to have a look at her channel as to why she feels she has to move halfway across the world to live in a safe environment or a safe place and it's quite shocking and as I've spent quite a bit of time with her me and my wife showing her around various places and that's and uh, I've been understanding of exactly how she feels and talking to many other people they feel the same also about not feeling safe in the country that they've lived in all of their lives and the feeling of having to move to another country just to feel safe now how sad is that and the two countries I'm going to be talking about is America and England how unsafe it is and why people feel the need to actually move halfway across the world crazy but I knew I wanted to leave England when I retired at 50 some 13 years ago now and because um, I work with various anti-social groups within the fire brigade because I worked in the fire brigade for 30 years and in my last 10 years I was dealing with anti-social groups and I could see it was on the rise and at the minute I would say crime pays in the UK as it does in America as well now you know since introducing that silly law that basically gives everybody the the freedom to go and rob a shop as long as it's not over $950 how crazy how crazy is that and in England it is about £250. If it's less than £250, you sort of face no, no repercussions for it. You'll get told off by the police. And uh, one programme I watched, it says, you won't even go to jail unless you've committed at least 50, 50 burglaries or 50 shop raids or some ridiculous amount of times. And it's just like, Crazy, crazy, crazy. So, so I'm going to look at it a slightly different way. I'm going to look at it with my own personal feelings of how I feel, how it's going and why things are happening the way they are. And uh, I think it's interesting because I've, I've got different views of it. I've got looking at it through different ways and hopefully you'll see my way of thinking as to maybe it's why you should jump ship and look elsewhere to have the golden years of your life feeling safer now I'm going to mention people wanting a safer life wanting to uh, live in a safer country and with the illegal immigrants um, coming to the UK, I've got no problem with them. Absolutely no problem with them wanting a safer and better life. Who can face it at the end of the day? This is why I live in Thailand, because I feel much safer and a better lifestyle here than the UK could give me. And I've worked all my life in the UK. 
but the UK at present is just oh, a sinking ship. And I think England, if it carries on the way it's going to go, is going to end up bankrupt. Because I'm going to give you some numbers here. And I look at the numbers, and anybody that knows anything about businesses and, and things like that know we're on a hammering. We cannot maintain the levels of money that we're paying out. It just, it's unreasonably high. It's stupidly high. Okay, let, let me give you an example. Well, this truck goes by. Do you remember, I mean, I'm 63 year old now, and I remember people talking about, oh, I wish I was a millionaire. If I was in a millionaire, I'd never have to work again. I'd love it because what a lifestyle you can live being a millionaire. And at one time, it was like that. You could live a fantastic life being a millionaire. But now I'm gonna give you an example of how little a million pound is. Now, if you changed a million pound and put it into seconds, so one second equals one pound, for a million seconds or a million pound, that is in time wise, 12 days. 12 days at a, a pound a second is one million pound. So how many times now do you hear, when they're on the news, when they're talking about, you know, the, the debt and things like that, we don't hear millions now. We hear billions. And occasionally, a couple of times, in America, trillions, trillions of dollars. But let's put that into some perspective. A billion pounds. Now... Not a million pounds, a billion. One billion pounds. Remember, one million pounds is 12 days. One billion pounds is 31 years. 31 years is the same equivalent of seconds and a billion pounds. 31 years. Now those people in the UK, the UK people will remember this, when Liz Truss, when Liz Truss was Prime Minister for 45 days in a fiasco of a budget, that cost the UK taxpayer because of their cock-up, it lost the UK taxpayer 30 billion pounds, 30 billion pounds. And do you know what he said? Oh, it was a bit of turbulence. A bit of turbulence because they didn't understand what we were trying to do. So we've lost 30 billion pounds. That's 31 times 31 years. <laughs> to put it in some perspective. Because he said the wrong thing. And the market acted accordingly because he said the wrong thing. 31 billion pounds. England, as America, has also got food banks. Food banks are everywhere. How shocking is it that food banks are in the wealthiest countries in the world? I live in Thailand. We don't have food banks. It's a poor country. There's no benefits. There is no state system. There is no um, bailout for people if, if they come here illegally. If you come here illegally, you're put in jail. And if you can't afford to get out and leave this country, you'll stay in jail. And believe you me, ask anybody who's in a Thai prison, they don't want to stay in a Thai prison. This is a poor country. But why does America, who again is struggling with, they call it the whole homeless crisis. I'm watching a lot of politics over the last couple of weeks with America and England and that because it sort of fascinates me because I'm here and I've got away from it really but I still enjoy watching the politics 
So all the politicians say we have a homeless crisis. No, we don't. We have a drugs crisis. We have a massive drugs crisis. And the drugs crisis causes the homelessness. And of course the government are going to step in and provide all of these homeless people with housing. Fantastic. Good idea. Nobody should be homeless. But how come they've got all of these millions of pounds and dollars for the war machine but when it comes to their own people they haven't got anything they haven't got no money to pay for any services to see what's causing the people to go down the the wrong route to start off with and as some somebody said on one of the programs that, that i watch is because of hope all hope has gone, so that's why they resort to drugs. And in some ways I can see that. If you're living from hand to mouth every day, and there's no real hope of getting out of that, somebody gives you a fix and it gives you the drugs, it gives you the, the uh, boost and makes you feel good for a while. And when all's said and done, that's the only thing that makes you good, it makes you feel good. So you want more, and then the slippery slope of drugs goes down. And away you go, you're hooked. And then you become a statistic, then you become a drain on society. So, do you want to live in a society like that? Do you want to live with fear of going out and walking because you might get mugged or robbed or everything stolen from you you know carjacked hijacked because let's think about it is it going to get any better i think not how can it get any better how can how can the government do it we're struggling to get rid of people in the uk who come here illegally we can't get rid of them because they come here illegally again like i say i've got no problem with them coming here trying to get a better life but where's the legal roots why isn't that being brought forward and like if you don't come the legal route you're going to get thrown out but they get rid of all the paperwork so they can't prove where they come from And we have a host of dodgy lawyers, and I hate lawyers, who lie for them and tell them if you, if you, say, if you say this, there was a little phrase one newscaster said, if you say you're gay, it means you'll stay. And some of the whistleblowers that are coming out with the very statements, they're saying that if they're that uneasy answering some of the questions we'll just say okay listen don't worry about it don't we don't want to upset you we don't want to make you feel bad so we won't ask you these embarrassing questions and what happens people get to know the system people pass on the way to get around the system it happens here in thailand as well you know i help people get around the system here and it's all legal. It's all legal and above board what I do. But it's just knowing the system. And it's totally legal, 100% legal. And that's where I help people negotiate and, and bend the rules maybe, but not break the rules. But let's take, let's take another ex cash example. Apparently one asylum seeker in the UK, whilst they're going through the process and accommodation and benefits and one thing and another, is going to take, or oh, it's going to cost the government £160,000 for one year. Just for accommodation, it's, it's worked out on average, it's over £4,000 a month. That's more than a fully qualified nurse gets. And they're just getting that paid to these big companies that own the hotels and um, hotels that put asylum seekers up that's been con uh, 
accommodated by the the government at exorbitant prices because they know they can ask whatever they want. So the average person or the average salary in England is thirty thousand pounds per month. Eh, sorry, per year. And they pay twenty percent tax on that after the twelve thousand five hundred and seventy pounds has been taken off. So twenty percent of that works out at three thousand five hundred pounds a year they pay tax. So that's almost 30, 35 to 40 years, I forget that without reading my notes, over 35 years in their tax contributions for one worker working on the average wage to pay for one asylum seeker for the year. So his tax is null and void for 35 years. So the whole of his work and career is paying his tax to keep one asylum seeker for a year. How, how can England, how can England carry on with that? Please leave your comments down below. Tell me what you think. Am I wrong? Have I got it totally wrong? But the cost of being safe, for me and many other people at the minute, is moving away from where you feel less safe. And sadly, that's the countries that most people are brought up in. The demographics of every country is going to change and it's going to make people feel uncomfortable. So until the next video, Les from Retired and Living the Dream, bye for now.